Okay, part three, the Last Supper, you should have that in front of you, and a pencil if you like to write things down, because there will be opportunity to do so. Let's begin with prayer. Lord Jesus, just as you spoke to your disciples in the upper room and showed your love to them, we ask for you to be with us today, expressing your love through your word. Amen. Quick review. Page one. Finish this sentence. Da Vinci's Last Supper painting is... Oh, Incorrect. Incorrect. Got another word? Wrong. Wrong. Inaccurate. <laughs> Laughable. Purposeful. Why purposeful? Why would he have done that on purpose even if he knew that wasn't quite right? Because artists do things like that. <laughs> there's a there's another reason, contextual reason. He was probably paid to do it. What's that? He was, but wanted to see. Remember, we talked a little bit about that. So to see, he's capturing which moment? Right after Jesus says he's going to be betrayed. Yeah, that somebody's going to betray. And so that's the expression of all of what? And the pointing of the huh? Uh, so he's doing that. But why else? It's in the cafeteria. And so it's kind of like you're sitting there and you're seeing them sitting there at the table and you're able to see them. So Da Vinci, I don't I never met Da Vinci. <laughs> um, but those are some of the reasons why he may have done it that way. He did leave notebooks uh, for, for things, and so we know who the people are supposed to be. That's why you have the one with all the names. He, tells he is way ahead of his time, because if you ever watch a sitcom, they all sit on one side of the table, so the cameraman can get a good picture. <laughs> Indeed. And sometimes... Uh, Sometimes in their serious things, they'll even do the formation of the Lord's Supper just as a gag. There's any number of those out there. All right, uh, so that's Da Vinci. Um, the triclinium. Triclinium, the word means? Three couches. Three couches. That's the, uh, the three sides to the U-shaped thing right there. You got some spots. Uh, which, is the, uh, which is the one that is the host? The cross, the plus sign, the that thing. Um, what's with the heart? Trusted, Trusted friend, the defender, uh, that person. Uh, the star would be the guest of honor. Very good. And across the table would be if somebody was doing what? Serving, Serving and they were at the table. Uh, that that would be their position. Got to know that uh, for what we're going to talk about. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, yeah, uh, why, why do we think that Jesus and his disciples ate in this fashion? That's yeah, the custom, it's the way they did it. They were under Roman rule, that's the way the Romans ate. Uh, it was normal, the rabbis actually switched to this because it was cultural, so we know that. It's in history. Were they for sure all on one side? No. No, they were. This is the table, so this is not, this is, uh, they sat here, 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 and all the way around. Because it seemed foolish to be like that. Yeah, in fact, if you look at the other picture, it's not the greatest, it's not the most clear, but if you look at it, you can see that U shape, and you can see the couches and the things on the table. Um, the middle part, would somebody would be able to step in and serve, you know, in all those spots. And so the opening to the, uh, to the room would be to that outside, you know, so you're facing, walking into the U. And uh, triclinium was the name of the couch uh, set up and table set up. It was also the name of the room. So it was called a triclinium. And then the table itself was called a triclinium. Three couches. Okay, turn the page. Just a touch more review. It looks like that table is pretty solid. So to get to the back, you'd have to climb in a little bit. I think you go around. There, there's usually room around. I don't know what that. I stole that picture from somewhere, so. In this one, it looks like they'd have to climb a little bit. But, you know, if you're used to reclining and eating, climbing maybe is fine. Yeah, yeah. So, the three questions are important. Can we learn where certain disciples were seated at the table? Sure. And why do we care? Uh, what can we learn about Jesus and his disciples if we can? We're kind of curious about that. Does it send a message at all if we can figure it out? Will this help us to understand the Gospels in a way we haven't before? I suggest the answer to that is yes. Okay? But those were my questions. They seemed normal and natural to me. Um, otherwise, why bother? 
We looked at Matthew last time. Uh, I told you that it is nearly identical to Mark's account, so I just printed the one. Uh, we looked at them, keywords and phrases. I'll just run them down for you real quickly so that you have an idea, and if you weren't here, you can catch up. Uh, keywords from Matthew 26, 20 to 25, and also Mark's Gospel, would be reclining in verse 20. That tells you they were lying down while they were eating. It fits with what we know historically, what the rabbis did, what the Roman culture was. They were reclining. Um, I think I asked the question last time, did you remember that? Did you, did you realize that? And mostly the answer is yes, but I think there might have been one or two. Hmm, didn't remember that. Uh, the second bullet point I had was, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. That's verse 23. Um, since it's said that way, what does that mean? Judas was supposed to. Him. Judas was even, I think we'd say have to say next to him, in order to do that. Remember, they're reclining on the left elbow. They're eating with the right. The head is toward the middle of the, ta of the U, of the table, and the feet are out at the edge. Okay? That is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it, it would yeah. be. And, oh, the other thing, because this might come into play as we read the, the account here. I read some that said that, you know, they are, that's the way you ate. You know, recline this way and, and eat with the right hand and talk like this. But sometimes it would almost be a rolling over onto the stomach where you're able to see and talk around the table. So. Uh, all right, so Judas is next to Jesus. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, surely not I, a rabbi. So again, Judas is next to him. He speaks to him. He's the one that dips um, into the bowl with him at the same time. Be picturing um, the, the flat bread dipped in a, like a jelly or jam sauce or, or uh, an oil uh, mix, something like that. Also called sop. Okay. Uh, so they, uh, he would be next to him doing that, being able to dip in the same time and also speak with him. And keep this in mind, in a way that not everybody else is hearing. That's going to become obvious in the next in the next section. Jesus says, "Yes, it is you." Uh, again, others aren't aren't hearing apparently, uh, and so again, this also supports the idea that Judas is right next to Jesus. Okay, uh, that's where we were. I, I may have missed one though. Did anybody have another important one that we had discussed last time? I feel like there was. I had verse twenty. No, yeah, verse 21 where he says, you will betray, one of you will betray me. I thought that. Okay. It doesn't help us with the seating arrangement, no, though, right? No, not necessarily. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to key on the ones that tell us where somebody was sitting. Um, but there's a, a lot of important points in this. Did, did we do John 13? No, we're going there right now. Oh. That's where we're going right now. So we're caught up. John 13. Okay, just prior to these verses we hear that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Keep that in mind, too. We talked a little bit about if you're leaning on your left and eating with your right and your feet are hanging out there, somebody walks behind and washes the feet. That, that would be possible. Okay? So that's described. If you want to read about it, go ahead. That's verses 1 through 17. 18 and onward says, Jesus says, I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As, Judas, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, 
Some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast, or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Do it on your own. Talk to people next to you, behind you. Go across the room if you have to. But come up with, uh, I came up with, what I get five? Five key words and phrases. I found five things that, that uh, kind of help us in this discussion. Um, most of them, at least four of them, have to do with uh, positioning at the table. Well, no, all five do. All five do. Uh, yeah. See if you can come up with five. I'll give you a few minutes to do so. The next section we're not going to do separately like this. We'll walk in together. says Psalm 41 9 even my close friend whom I trusted he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me uh, the the lifting up of the heel is the is betraying um, yeah really betray it has the sense of betray so that that was the first one on my list fulfilling scripture sharing the, the bread 
Uh, all right, what was the next? Does somebody want to offer? Just one, just one. The one reclining next to me. Uh, Verse 24. <coughs> the disciple whom Jesus loved was reclining. 23. 23. I'm sorry. 20. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. Ah, there it is. 23. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just had the wrong number in. Yeah. Verse 23. Reclining next to him. So, John is in one of those two priority spots, right? He's either the trusted one. There's actually two things in that because it's the one reclining next to him. It also says the one he loved. True. Which is a big. Yeah. Which, we don't know for sure, but we which, we think we know. It's yeah, John. yeah. We're pretty pretty certain that it's John uh, because of other other God. That's the way John in his gospel refers to. It. You know this probably many of you when when it talks about the one whom Jesus loved. You find that in John's gospel. He's the one that writes that way. But when he it's him writing about himself, and you can find that out by the other gospel accounts, a matching account that will tell you John was this guy. And then you see John, our take on it is, our understanding is, John in humility doesn't name himself. Especially when it puts him into the right. So, um, so if uh, he's in one of the two priority spots, and if he's the one that Jesus loved, he's probably he's on the in the first right position, side, right? Well, that, not in that verse, doesn't <laughs> So that, that's verse 23. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 24, there's something. Yeah. What's that, Kathy? That's Simon Peter's motion and saying, ask him. So he can't be that close. Okay, so two things. He must not be quite that close enough to hear, and he must be able to be seen because he motions. So, many people suggest he's, sitting across. he's across, right across the table in the servant position. That's what people suggest. Kathy's going to argue with most of many people. Well, go ahead. <laughs> you can. I'm just saying. What I have to say kind of goes with that. Because yeah. he was the one that said, not to him, but to the other disciples. Yeah. 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 I mean, he really yeah. is thinking, that's not your job. Maybe even that's mine. Yes. So, let's talk about that for a second. Hit pause on our list. Um, if he's across the way, it makes sense. When you read the account, you could picture it happening that way. Again, uh, here's the U shape. There you go. You're Jesus. Right? Who am I? You're Peter. Well, we think. Well, we're not there yet. We're, we're not quite to that verse. We think we know who you are. Okay. We think so. Yes, right. You're just like that. So if um, if you're leaning on the left and you're all leaning on the left, you're kind of looking that way and you have to turn to be seen, right? But if you are leaning on your left here, you have no problem seeing easily, yes? You can look right across. So they suggest that Peter's probably in this spot. He can't he can't hear. But he's but he can motion and and catch this person's <laughs> eye. That's what people suggest. There was another hand though. Was it Jeff? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Same thing. Uh, so good minds over there thinking alike. So in verse in chapter thirteen, uh, the foot washing part. Just to let you know something else that people that study these things think. Um, Oh, verse 5, after that he poured water into a basin, began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. So he says, all right, so at this time Jesus gets everything together and he washes the disciples' feet. Then comes, he came to Simon Peter, who said, said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, you shall never <coughs> wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. It's so, Peter. the suggestion, yeah, it's so Peter, right? <laughs> no, 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 Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Whatever you said the last time, I'm on board now. That's kind of Peter. Um, so, it sounds like him. Uh, so, if he's at that spot in the table, people suggest it would be very natural. If Jesus is there and he's washing feet, he's starting at that end. 
especially if he's sitting over there. Because what the account continues and says, then he moved his place at the table. Now, could there be other ways? Yes. But the suggestion is that he begins with Peter. And Peter goes, what? What are you doing? And he's in the servant. And if he's in the servant position, and he recognizes that he's in that position, he could also be thinking, this is supposed to, I'm, if anybody, I'm supposed to be doing this. <clears throat> and so then Jesus would have washed his feet, gone around the outside of the U, finished up, towel away, and then took, taken his place back. That's, that's what people suggest went on and why they think Peter's across the way. The picture I have in my head is comes from Milwaukee, and we were in Milwaukee. Oh. We went to either a high school or a college, and there is a statue of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. That you know which a, one that is? Is that's it Wisco? Wisconsin Lutheran it's College, Wisco. that's where uh, yeah. Tyler and Cody go. Okay, that's the one. And uh, you'll, if you look at the back, pick, back folders, um, that statue is on one of the... Okay, so that's the picture I have. Yeah, it's not and it comes from John here. chapter 13. Yeah, okay, except we don't see the table or anything there. It's just, right, and, you don't, and the yeah, person exactly. isn't reclining. Right. So probably it's reclining. Is it on the part two on Thursday? Part two, Thursday part two. And not on the one that you have. Chair. If you have the part two no, one of this. Right. There. Yeah, he's sitting on a chair. He's sitting on like a Yeah. yeah that's Again, artist rendition, yeah. and they're trying to portray, you know, just Jesus' servant leadership, yeah. Yeah. which they teach really well. maybe in the servant position, probably the first to get his feet washed, which is why the reaction. I mean, Peter probably, Jesus started somewhere else, the thinking goes. Peter would have said, whoa, 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 Already. Yeah. It wasn't just about Peter. He, the respect and love for Jesus that he had would have probably prompted him to stop him from doing it at all. So those are the thoughts there. All right, so now, now, we want to pair the next one with the previous one. Oh, I don't know. Then I'm not in order. Are you in verse 25? No. No? Nope. I'm in 6. Did I get my number right? Yes. yes. Yeah? Verse 25, then, he asked, Peter asked, so it goes to which John, who was next to Jesus. Oh, then, yeah, okay, it's the same. Leaning back oh. against okay. Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is So, leaning back against Jesus. So, if okay. Jerry is Jesus, and this would make you John, wouldn't it? Leaning back against. Yeah. If you're reclining at the triclinium and Jesus is the host, that would be the position of John. So, <laughs> no, that's a that's the other place people think, Brandy. Um, they they wonder if Judas wasn't sitting in that spot. But I think, given the arrangement, I definitely lean toward. I think what most say, and that would be John. Is there a hand? Well, I was just it says leaning back. Right. So if you're here, this is not leaning back. This is leaning back. Yeah, if you're on your left, yeah. back is right into Jesus. Yeah. Which if you're puts on here, you're going to lean back. You have to lean the opposite way. Otherwise, you're leaning on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you're le leaning back this way. No, no, no. You're on your left. You're on your left. Yeah. Yeah. So back is this way. Sure. Forwards against the table. Right. So if you're Jesus and Bill is John, right back into it. Oh, no, 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 not, not in the reverse way. I think it just means back. Just back. Yep. Uh, so that would make, that would, would it fit with everything else we've talked about and what you know of John? That he'd be in that spot. Yes. If he's the disciple that Jesus loved, the one that he trusted, and he's leaning back, and he's next to him, and he's asking Jesus a question because he's nearby. He's got to be in one of those two also. That seems to be the spot. 
And uh, did you get another one? Yes. I heard a lot of fours, but yep. Well, Judas has to be someplace right close there because he got up and left quickly. So he's not going to be all the way around the table or something like that. He's got to be next to Jesus. Okay. And we've already seen in Matthew and Mark that he was close, right? But now look at verse 26. He gave the bread to him. He gave it to Judas. So uh, tradition was that the first sop, the first dipping of the bread in the sauce, whatever it's made out of, fruits and whatever, the first one, the host would dip and give to the guest of honor, placing it in his mouth. Ooh. You have to be close. It, you got to be right there. And does that... What does this say? There are a handful of things that probably come to mind. My wife would say the person with the money is important. The person with the money is important. The always the most important. The accountant's always the most important. So of course he would be nearby. Yeah. I think he might be giving Judas that one last opportunity to not do this. And he put him there on purpose. So here's the quick, here are the quick, well, I'll let, I should let you talk. It's so much fun to think about. Maybe not as much fun for you. Great. I'm amazed that he actually took the bread. Yes, it's your hair. Okay. <laughs> Why did he do that? If he was right there and he was hearing what was going on. But if you're in that position, and the tradition is the first one the host gives to, what, what if you don't? What if you don't take it? What does that say to everyone? I, I don't know. We're, we're guessing. He's also just trying to play stuff off. Like, whatever his plans are to sell him, he's just trying to play off to his friends that everything's normal. So this would be the normal action. He's in, right next to him. Just take it. Play along. Everything's this is what fine. You do. Take, the, take the bread. It says in nope. verse 30. What's that? As soon as Judas had taken the bread. Yeah. Yeah, so he did it. He went right along. But the question was, why, why would he do that if he heard that it was the betrayer? But if you're keeping things quiet, which he had been doing, that... Yeah, I, I'm wondering if John was the only one who heard. John leaned back and asked the question yeah. Jesus told him, because later it says nobody even realized what Verse 18, though. Yes, but there it could have been taken as a general, right? He who shares his bread, they're all going to do that. So it could be there. But verses, I marked mine, uh, verses 23 through 26, appear to be a, a private conversation. Yep. So this is that part. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus left. So John's reclining next to him. Peter motions to John, maybe across the, the way, and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back, Lord, who is it? Jesus answers, it's the one I give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. And then he dips it and gives it to Judas. So a lot of privacy going on. Obviously not everything was overheard, right? So Judas maybe didn't even hear that part. Even though he was next to him. If John's leaning back and Jesus just whispers it, he doesn't hear it then. Questions everywhere. No, it's not a question. It's really Come. a comment about the seat of honor. Yeah. If Judas hadn't fulfilled his role, Christ would have died on Christ. Correct. And this is why Jesus talks the way he does about fulfilling his scripture and the one that he trusted and, and matching it with the psalm prophecy. And yeah. Well, I think in John 27, as soon as Judas, Judas took the bread, Satan entered into it. So he wasn't maybe, is that maybe what made Totally convinced yet, or totally, you know, what, what was the status of that? I point? think that that comment probably means Satan drives him to activity right then, because then he gets yeah. up and he, and he goes. Right? Yeah, he already had bought into the plan and all of that, so it's pushed by Satan. Yeah. Sorry, a bunch of questions. Ladies first. Um, I was just going to say, obviously, it was somewhat of a private conversation because in verse 29, it said some thought that Jesus was telling them to buy what was in the feast. So yeah. some people didn't even know what was going on. Yeah, they didn't get details at all. They just saw what happened. They saw him. Right. You know. Any ideas of how to uh, mesh together Matthew and John? In which? Um, 
Well, because in, in Matthew, Judas actually replies, surely not I, but Jesus says, yes, it is you. And, and what Jesus said um, in each is a little different. There's some extra things. I'm just wondering yeah. how those two it's Just timeline-wise? Yeah. It, it, it kind of seems, well, we're going to have to pick up here next time, but it, it uh, I think that there's a way to do that, I, rather than rush it. So, not next week, because Pastor Kosalki is getting in here with a surprise Bible study. Ooh. And then two more, I think. We'll have